Which one is the most orange? Oh, what the world? That's pretty frustrating, right? But you know what's not frustrating? Well, our new video is coming out here on YouTube. Now, here's a mini sample before we get today's lecture started. Fibrillation fireworks is the best way to remember V-Fib, the most deadly rhythm of all time. One of only two rhythms that you actually defibrillate or shock. Now, the other one is pulseless v tack So, what is V-Fib? Well, ventricular fibrillation is a chaotic pattern of electrical activity in the ventricles in which electrical impulses arise from many different foci. All right, guys, before we get started, don't forget to do two things. First of all, subscribe right here so you can see all of our new videos coming out here on YouTube first before they get locked in our video vault at simplenursing.com. And also click right up there to your free demo to our new quiz bank, as well as 1,200 videos not here on YouTube. All right, guys, let's get our oldies webcam video started right here. Okay, so your patient is on a ventilator. What does this mean? How do you make sure that your ventilator is cued right, as well as what is the different modes of ventilation with your, ventil your ventilated patient? Well, your ventilators work a lot like a dishwasher or an air conditioning system. You want to make sure that your patient is getting enough air into their lungs without um, bursting their lungs. Because if we put too much air into the lungs itself, it's going to cause your patient to have an overinflation. Also with this, you want to make sure your patient is getting enough respirations per minute as well as enough oxygen, what's called our um, FiO2. So let's go into what, whoa, what this means here, okay? So for your vent settings and your vent modes. So there's two major modes in terms of your um, your vent settings. You have an assist control mode, what's called an AC mode. This AC mode just makes sure that your patient it's breathing for your patient. So your AC mode is full-fledged breathing for your patient and your patient is taking enough breaths but your AC mode is pushing oxygen, pushing air down into those respiratory tracts. So when your patient is on an ET tube or a vent, endotracheal tube here, we're basically putting a tube down into the respiratory tract, inflating a balloon, and pushing air from this endotracheal tube, okay? Now your patient can also be on a, um, they can also have a hole, an opening right here where we're putting a tube right there as well as just breathing for your patient, okay? Your patient who has long-term respiratory failure where let's say your patient is um, brain dead and they can't breathe for themselves. They're gonna be on an assist control mode, which is forcing air down into their lungs, making sure that it's breathing for them. Now let's say your patient is coming out of anesthesia after an OR, after an operation. We're gonna put your patient, start him or her on AC mode, switch them over to what's called SIMV mode, also known as your weaning mode. Just making sure that your patient, we're, we're kind of decreasing um, the vent, and your patient's gonna hopefully start breathing by themselves, and this weaning mode 
is putting the patient in control of the respirations and kind of taking the responsibility of the ventilator itself off the main responsibility of pushing air into the patient's lungs. Does that make sense, hopefully? You also have something called tidal volume, which is a setting on your, on your uh, ventilator. So this tidal volume pushes a certain number of mLs, milliliters, into the patient's respiratory tracts. So, your patient will probably be on between, let's say, 500 to 800 milliliters. Whoa, get a better pen here. Let's say your patient's on 500 to, let's say, 800 milliliters of air down into the respiratory tracts. You want to make sure that this tidal volume is set right for your patient's body weight. If you put too much pressure, too much volume down into those lungs, you can burst the lungs, also called a pneumothorax. You can actually burst the patient's lungs if you over inflate them. So the tidal volume is making sure that we're just inflating your patient's lungs just enough, okay? For your respiratory rate, your respiratory rate should be between 16 to 20 respiratory, I'm sorry, breaths per minute. We're filling your patient's lungs up with oxygen and hopefully that rate is good for your patient. Now anything between 12 and 20 is adequate but we want to make sure your patient is breathing enough um, and this rate at which oxygen and air goes down into the lungs will help us to do that. Now your FiO2 is the amount of oxygen that we're putting inside the ventilator itself to pump your patient's lungs up with air. So usual FiO2 is between like 35% to let's say 50% FiO2. If your patient's not compensating and not getting a lot of oxygen, we can bump it up to let's say 75, even close to 100% FiO2. So the main things to remember here is that you have different modes as well as different settings for your patient on the vent. Now, there's also a few other things that we um, that help keep your patient's airways open. So you have positive end um, pressure, what's called PEEP. This PEEP helps keep those alveoli open at the end of the respiration. So sure, we're pushing down a lot of air into the distal portions of the respiratory tracts. After that air is delivered, the alveoli sometimes collapse. So how do we make sure that those alveoli are, keeped, are kept open so that we don't have a collapse right after we push all that tidal volume in? Well, it's something we call PEEP. And this PEEP is our positive end expiratory pressure, PEEP. It helps keep that alveoli open. So alveoli is kept open at the end of the respiratory, um, basically at the end of the respiratory pressure. So, your patient's alveoli is not gonna collapse at the end with this, oh, here it is, <laughs> with this PEEP. That's to keep the alveoli open. Hopefully, we're hoping 
to increase the oxygen supply and that oxygen exchange. So the main goal is to decrease your CO2. Decrease, I'm sorry, increase your pH. Make sure we're not acidic. Um, we're trying to get out that carbon diacid to make sure your patient is not in respiratory acidosis. As well as increase the oxygenation of your pulmonary artery oxygen, your PaO2. We're hoping it's greater than 90%, um, I'm sorry, greater than between 80 and 100%. Anything less than 60 is criteria for acute respiratory distress syndrome. All right, guys, thanks for watching only one part in our full video here at simplenursing.com. If you guys click the link right here, you can get access to our full course as well as our new quiz bank, which is really nifty. And also guys, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel right here. And last, but definitely not least, a big thank you to our script team and nursing family who helped us put together all these nifty videos.